Valencia has it all. Splendid medieval buildings, spectacular modern attractions, great Mediterranean beaches and world-famous paella. I first visited Valencia for our honeymoon and I've been coming back ever since. And as a tour guide, I can't wait to show you the best things to do in Valencia, Spain. The top of the Serranos Towers is a great starting point. From these 33 meters or 108 feet tall medieval towers, you will get an unobstructed view of the entire city. As for centuries, Valencia was surrounded by the city walls, the only way in and out was through the city gates. And this, pentagon-shaped towers were built in the late 1300s to protect one of the busiest and most important city gates. But the gates were much more than just an entrance. They were ornamented and also used as a triumphal arch for festive and solemn occasions. Later, the tower served as a prison and as a hiding place for works of art during the Spanish Civil War. When the city walls were demolished, the gates with the towers were preserved as one of the landmarks of Valencia. In front of the Serranos Towers is an empty riverbed with one of the largest urban parks in Spain. Riverbed used to be occupied by the river Turia, but after a catastrophic flood in 1957, it has been rerouted and now flows south of the city. Old Riverbed was turned into a picturesque sunken park that has become one of the most popular spots for the citizens. An 8-kilometer or 5-mile long ribbon of greenery snakes along the historical center and passes by the city's main museums and monuments on both banks connected by many bridges. There are numerous footpaths, leisure and sports areas, and a unique Gulliver Park for kids. Large-scale Gulliver lying on the floor is full of ramps, stairs and slides. The old city gates between Serrano's Towers lead to the historic city center and its buzzing old town district of El Carmen. Entire historic city center is a display of Valencia's 2,000 years of history with traces of previous Roman, Visigoth and Arab civilizations. In the El Carmen neighborhood, you can see an Arab portal leading to the ancient Moorish quarter. Portal was built into the ancient Muslim walls that at the time surrounded the city. To the west, the neighborhood ends with another impressive city gate, Torres de Quart. El Carmen is famous for having many restaurants, popular tapas bars and vivid nightlife as this is one of the hotspots for young people. Neighborhood also has one of the city's best museums and art galleries. Here you can also come across interesting little spots like House of Cats, built by a local artist as a shelter for street cats. You should also take a look at a small church of St. Nicholas, erected in the 1200s, right after Christians reconquered Valencia from the Muslims. It is regarded as Valencia's Sistine Chapel, as its fresco paintings from the 1600s show scenes of the life of St. Nicholas and St. Peter Martyr. One of the largest historic city centers in Europe is made for wandering. Beautiful historical buildings and old churches line beautiful streets and surround charming squares. And this one has been the heart of the city since the ancient times. Picturesque square is dominated by the back of the cathedral and all around are cafes and bars where you can relax and soak up the atmosphere. There is also a fountain dedicated to the diverted city river, the most important source of fresh water. The river is the reason for the existence of the oldest judicial institution in Europe called the Water Tribunal. For more than 1,000 years, the tribunal has been making decisions in Valencian language regarding the disputes about water. Public session takes place every Thursday at noon at the beautiful Door of the Apostles. The cathedral's entrance is decorated with carvings of the Twelve Apostles, but this was originally the main entrance to the Moorish Mosque that was replaced by the cathedral. But the main entrance to the cathedral is from Plaza de la Reina. Spacious and lively square is blessed with a gorgeous backdrop and is one of the city's hotspots. It is lined with cafes and restaurants where you can sit down and embrace the atmosphere. Besides the cathedral's bell tower, the other side of the square is dominated by a beautiful baroque bell tower of Santa Catalina Church. Both bell towers can be visited. When wandering streets of Valencia, you will come across other striking historical buildings like impressive 15th-century Gothic palace used as a headquarters of the Valencia government, the beautiful Rococo nobility palace Marquis de los Aguas, now used as a national ceramics museum, and La Nau, the former building of the old university. 
the best way to discover the old town is to take a guided tour and I'll put my favorite ones in the description below. But besides having a beautiful historical city, Valencia also offers beautiful Mediterranean city beaches. North from the city's harbor is the beginning of a miles-long wide stretch of sand. Within minutes of the old town, you can reach its most popular beaches, Las Arenas and La Malvarosa. First beach north from the harbor is Las Arenas, followed by La Malvarosa, named after a type of roses that used to grow here. Together they form a spacious and popular white strip of golden sands. Safe and clutter-free beaches have been awarded the blue flag for all the amenities, including sports and recreation facilities. Both beaches are more than just a place to tan and swim, as they are also hosting different events. They are also lined by a wide seaside promenade, popular for cycling, rollerblading, jogging or walking. Along the promenade facing the seafront are cafes and restaurants open all year round. Fine golden sand and easy access from anywhere in the city are the main reasons for the huge popularity of these beaches. Back to beautiful historic architecture that can also be found outside the city center and one of its best examples is a library that was built as a monastery. This building from the 1500s is one of the best examples of Valencian Renaissance. It was erected on the site of a former abbey and a Muslim farmhouse before that. Behind a two-towered Renaissance facade hides a complex that includes a church and a monastery with two cloisters. The monastery was sold in the 19th century when it became a prison that from the 1939 held the opponents of the Franco's dictatorship. In the 1960s, it was acquired by the city of Valencia and turned into a state school and later into the library. You can enter for free and see only part of the complex during the working hours of the library, so be sure to check the schedule before you go. You can see more of it if you attend a guided tour, which takes place on Saturday and Sunday, but you should contact them in advance. Tours last about 45 minutes and are available only in Spanish and Valencian. The easiest way to reach the monastery is by tramline number 6. Back in the city center, you should visit the Falas Museum. Here you can learn about a unique festival that takes place every March when Valencia celebrates the arrival of spring. Falas is one of the most popular Spanish festivals. It combines tradition, satire and art and was recognized by UNESCO as part of intangible heritage of humanity. During the festival, quirky satirical figures called niños are erected on the streets of Valencia. They are made from combustible materials and are set on fire on the last day of the festival on March 19th to welcome the spring. Over time, citizens and professional artists were making more and more elaborate and beautiful figures representing social, political and cultural themes in a satirical way. As part of the festival, they were all set on fire until in 1934 the best Nino was pardoned and saved from fire. Since then, one Nino is pardoned by a popular vote each year. Pardoned Niñas are exhibited in the Falas Museum and the collection includes all of them since 1934. The pardoned figures represent a unique social and cultural reflection of Valencia and the world. But in the very heart of the old town is the largest indoor food market in Europe. With its colors, flavors, atmosphere and architecture, you simply cannot miss out on this market. This is a display of Valencia's pride in agricultural traditions as well as its love for beautiful architecture. Beautiful Art Nouveau metal and glass building blends perfectly with the historic architecture. Its unusual roof with domes and sloping sections at different heights creates a light, spacious, colorful and airy interior with an impressive variety and quality of food. On hundreds of stalls you can find farm and sea fresh produce, cold cuts, cheese, spices, fruit, nuts and much more. If there is a Spanish delicacy you love, you will find it here or you should at least refresh yourself with delicious natural fresh juice. The best idea is to visit the market in the morning as it can get crowded, especially in the summer. Most vendors speak English and allow you to taste their products, so you should have fun exploring the stalls. Opposite to the central market is one of the most famous non-religious Gothic buildings in Europe. It's known as the Silk Exchange, but the building was used by all sorts of merchants from all parts of the Mediterranean. 
here they met for negotiations and closed the deals. The complex was finished in the 1500s when Valencia was one of Europe's main centers of trade and culture. A masterpiece of Valencian Gothic architecture is the finest monument of Valencia's golden age and part of UNESCO World Heritage. Inside you can marvel at the beautiful twisting columns of the main hall and look up at the incredible detail of the vaulted ceilings. This was the financial center of La Lonja, where the merchants worked out contracts, hence its name Contract Room. Like many grand historic buildings in Valencia, this one also has its orange garden. It takes you to the stairs leading to the rooms of the trade court, first Spanish marine merchant tribunal. On occasion, the tribunal would imprison merchants for debts. Silk exchange is open every day and there is no entrance fee. If you are a fan of the Holy Grail legend, then Valencia's Cathedral should be on the top of your list. One of the most famous attractions in the city treasures a cup apparently used by Jesus Christ at the Last Supper. Catholic Church replaced the former mosque after the Christian reconquest of Valencia. Over the centuries, several changes and additions took place, like its Baroque main entrance leading to its impressive interior. Above the high altar, you can admire beautiful frescoes of 12 angels playing music. The interior highlight is, of course, a chapel holding a holy chalice. The relic itself is only the top portion of the chalice, a finely polished dark brown cup. The handles and the chalice steam were made later. Apparently, St. Peter brought the chalice to Rome, but during persecution of Christians in the 3rd century, the chalice was moved to Spain. During Muslim invasion of Spain in the 700s, the chalice was hidden in Pyrenees and it changed several hands until in the 1400s it was given to the Cathedral of Valencia. Among the cathedral's relics is also an arm of St. Vincent Martyr, patron of the city. Entrance fee includes an audio guide and access to museum located inside the cathedral. The cathedral's octagonal bell tower from the 1300s is the landmark of Valencia. Originally, the bell tower was separated from the church, but later extensions merged the two structures together. You can use a spiral staircase to climb its 207 steps, although the view from the top is a bit obstructed. Finally, here is the most famous modern tourist complex in Valencia, built in the former riverbed. The City of Arts and Sciences is the largest complex of its kind in Europe and includes seven futuristic buildings that have all become symbols of the city. Hemispheric was the first building in the City of Arts and Sciences. It was opened in 1998 and resembles a giant eye. Its roof creates an interior with a large sphere that is used as the projection room for planetarium and laser shows. Next to it is an interactive museum of science that resembles the skeleton of a whale. Museum offers didactic, interactive and entertaining way everything to do with life, science and technology where it is prohibited not to touch, not to feel and not to think. Next majestic building is an opera house and performing arts center. Building has impressive roof and panoramic lifts and stairways connecting platforms at different heights. Buildings are surrounded by water, they are connected by pathways and an open structure with a walkway under the arches surrounded by a park of indigenous plant species that grow only in Valencia. Here is also a multi-purpose space for promoting knowledge, science and culture called the Agora. This immense oval-shaped metal structure with a blue outer shelf is offering bright open and diverse space open to the public and used for different events. Old Riverbed is crossed by an impressive white cable state bridge. Cables run from a huge curved pylon that rises for 125 meters or 410 feet and is the highest point in the city. But one of the most impressive experiences in the city of arts and sciences is a visit to the largest and most modern aquarium in Europe. This place faithfully reproduces the most important marine ecosystems from each of the planet's seas and oceans and is home to 45,000 animals from 500 different species. Gorgeous architecture and unique arrangement of the various aquariums make the marine world more accessible to visitors than ever. Each building holds one of the aquatic environments that include the Mediterranean, wetlands, 
tropical seas, oceans, the Antarctic, the Arctic, islands and the Red Sea. Here you'll find the longest underwater tunnel in Europe with over 20 different species of sharks, rays and other massive fish. If you get hungry, you can visit an underwater restaurant housed in the most iconic building of the complex with unique roof design. Oceanographic has many spectacular animals and places, but one of the coolest things to see is the dolphin show in the largest dolphinarium in Europe. There are two or three shows a day, each lasting about 45 minutes. To complete your Valencia experience, check out my favorite tours, tickets and experiences in the description below. My name is Rock, thanks for the thumbs up and for watching and see you next time.